It's giving Khaleesi. Hi. <laughs> Who? Khaleesi. Hey, Taylor. What's up, Jasmine? My gosh, I'm so tired. It's currently 5 o'clock, and it feels like <laughs> we just woke up. It's the Monday after Coachella. So welcome to our holy day of rest and reflection. This is like an integral part of the overall experience. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So Jasmine and I live on different internets. We are dear friends, but we absolutely do not occupy the same internet. And we've established this for the last several years. What I see on my For You page and my algorithm is a completely different version of internet culture than what you get. A thousand percent. There will be so many times where you're giving references that you swear are so viral. And I'm like, what? Can you send me an appendix? I need footnotes. I need receipts. I need, because I have no idea what you're talking about. A receipts, lot of the times. screenshots, timelines. Do you know yeah, that one? I do reference? know that one. I okay. do know that one. I do know that one. <laughs> that like comes together in the culmination for us a lot of times at Coachella. Every single time Taylor points out someone to me and she's so excited, just like, oh my God, Jasmine, we just walked past. And I'm like, walk past who? Walk past what? Every so, single time. I have no idea who she's talking about. My favorite thing to do at Coachella is to just look around for famous people literally all day. So let's do a rapid fire. You can tell me if you know who they are. Yes or, or no. Yes or no. Done. Harry Jowsey. No. Phineas. Yes. Lele Pons. No, absolutely not. Rudy Berry. No. Renee Rapp. Yes. Lala. No. Wait, well, Black Lala? Not Black Lala. Then no. The <laughs> other one. Lance Bass. Yeah. Oh my, yes. Charlie D'Amelio. No. JT Barnett. No. Tezza. No. Nikki Reardon. No. At this point, I think you're just making up names. No, I'm not. <laughs> the Lance Pass sighting was funny, though, because it was literally at the porta potties. We were in VIP. There's like a bunch of porta potties. But in addition to that, there's also these like trailer bathrooms that are like elevated porta potties. And there's never a line for the men's trailers ever. But Lance Bass walked past them and like chose to use the porta potty. And I don't know, something about that to me was just like, what a grounded, down-to-earth man. And then also, that's not the time where you're going to go up and ask someone for a selfie Absolutely outside not. the porta potties That's just like, I feel like that has to be like a universal boundary. No, no, Do no, that. no. That's such a personal moment. That's so intimate. The aesthetics are also super off. And I've never seen anyone crowd an artist or like a celebrity or influencer in that space. A topic that I saw a lot coming on my internet is like the Coachella fashion. A lot of conversation about bringing boho, kind of OG Coachella fashion back. Did you see any of that commentary? So many circle boho boats. So many. So oh many. Gosh, I was so, so I was so glad I didn't get one. There was also a lot of the like silver boho belts. I did wear one of those on one day, but the big chunky ones, like the free people ones, it felt way too oversaturated as a trend. I was like, thank God I did not get that in my outfit. But I felt like the standout trend to me fashion wise, there was so many bows, but it was done in like a cute way. So boho, croquette, and not as many tube tops and cargo pants as I thought I was going to see. Still a lot of them though. Still quite a lot of like small top oversized pants. Maxi skirts, maxi dresses. 100% saw a lot more of that this year. One of the things that I love about Coachella is the fashion. I'm always excited to see how people want to express themselves in this space. It, for me, the way I approach what I'm wearing to Coachella every year is like the kind of things that I want to wear, but like don't either have the opportunity or the space. And I think for me, a big piece is just like safety, like in terms of wearing stuff that might be a little bit more revealing than I would wear in my normal day-to-day -day life. We forgot another huge trend that you did do, Western. Cowboy Carter. Okay, Western. Okay, so something I definitely saw a lot of this year was Western. And I think specifically for me that I noticed is like black people in Western. And I know that that is 100% the Beyonce Cowboy Carter effect. Totally. Um, I didn't see it, but people kept saying that there was a Cowboy Carter banner being flown over by plane over the festival a couple of days. Really? I saw it on TikTok. I oh, saw it on I my TikTok. I didn't see that on my TikTok. I saw a lot, actually. 
And there was this one really funny clip of the banner being flown over the festival and the perspective was it was like right over the lemonade stand, which I was just like, <laughs> which obviously like the per they can't help that. It just was like a moment, but like the person who caught it. Wait, that is amazing how content. How is that, right? I saw it. lots of Western. I love it. I was just saying that I didn't want to participate in trends, but I absolutely participated in that trend. And I was so happy that I did because every black person I saw with a cowboy hat, I understood and they understood when we saw each other, we understood like, yes, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing this for. It was a really fun cultural moment to be a part of this weekend. So you're seeing the Beyonce. I'm seeing Taylor. That's like pretty much the only thing, honestly, that I'm seeing. Taylor and Travis everywhere. We were at so many things that they were at. I need to show you. Taylor reacting to James Kennedy's Cruel Summer remix from Neon Carnival. What? Well, first of all... <laughs> Let's set the stage for our experience at James Kennedy. So Neon Carnival is like a after party. It's the Saturday night of Coachella. It's invite only. You can't like buy tickets to it. It's very much for kind of like the LA crowd, I guess, is basically the only way you can get in is if you like live in LA and have connections. And set up like a little, like a little music festival. There's like one stage and there's different brand activations all around, which was so fun. I loved going they did there. A great job. It's all sponsored, so everything is free. And they have their own kind of like, I guess, like music lineup and dance floor. And then I saw that James Kennedy was going to be the main DJ this year. And so James Kennedy is on Ben from Rules, which Jasmine doesn't oh, watch. Wait, well, pause. We're going to set more of the stage. I wanted to go this year. I was excited to go this year because of the other DJs on the lineup, which were DJ Honeybee, which is someone who's all over my TikTok for the last, like, you don't know who she is, do you? DJ Honeybee, I was like, who? Which is crazy, because DJ Honeybee has, like, almost a million followers, and, like, she is on my TikTok or Instagram, like, every day with, like, a new amazing mix. Um, so I was excited to see her in that context. You said you wanted to go for James Kennedy. I had no idea who this person was. And... You know, I watch Van Pump Rules and appreciate and enjoy him on the show. I've never seen him DJ before. Caveat. And he came up with this really cool merch that was like the Prada logo, but instead of saying Prada, it said pasta, which is like an inside joke to the show. It's not about the pasta. Anyway, so I was like, oh my God, I need this shirt. I hope it comes in time for Neon Carnival. I need to wear this shirt at Neon Carnival, at James Kennedy. He's going to bring Sheena on stage to do good as gold. Like, I'm just dreaming up all of these scenarios. So we get to Neon Carnival, and the DJ Pee Wee was on. And Who's the, Anderson Pack? Is If you don't know, is Anderson Pack. He DJs under that alias. He is just like a music head, like just a real jazz, R&B, fun, or more than anything, just like a funk music guy. Um, but he's been DJing everywhere over the last like year. He was one of the surprise sets at the Do Lab this weekend, which we People didn't know really about. Excited about. But we get there, and the dance floor is so activated at that time. The vibes are so high, the oh energy is so high, and he was playing so many different types of music. And he had live instrumentation. There was a trumpet player playing along with some of the mm -hmm. music. He got on drums at various points throughout his set. And he even had Busta Rhymes come out and do like three songs. And the energy was very, very high because musically everything was going right during his set. It was amazing. Like it was so much fun. Anytime I see him on the lineup anywhere as DJ Pee Wee, I have to go. I was like, this is more fun than Coachella. Like that's how I felt in that moment. So then it's like, okay, James Kennedy is coming out. His entrance was very, very grandiose, very like, and mind you, I don't know who this man is. So I'm seeing this entrance. I'm like, okay, like this person is really about to bring it. It was like the lights went totally dark on the big LED screen. Like you're about to have a James Kennedy experience. I said you're ready to party. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Neon Carnival, are you ready? Are you ready? For the James Kennedy Experience. Let us embark on a musical journey through space and time. It was 
really bad y'all immediately immediately the first thing you hear is like two computers fighting with each other <laughs> on the dance floor it was so loud it was a literally to our, assaulting to our ears like this was very bad I was just like I just want to get my photo and go and then I was like I need to take this shirt off immediately I am embarrassed to be walking around in James Kennedy merch. So we're like, we need to get away from this music. And you can escape. And this is like, it's not a massive space, but it's, it's, it's quite, it's, I mean, of the brand activations, I think it's one of the larger ones because it's a carnival. In theory, if you wanted to like get away from the dance floor and the music, you should be able to, but the music was so loud. We went to every corner of the festival, just trying to have like a chill moment to sit down everywhere we went even to the furthest point from the dance floor you could still hear and it was so just such aggressive loud sounds and the remixes were so horrible and so many people left the dance floor in that moment I don't think I'd ever been to a place before where the music was so bad that it forced you to leave because we were like we do not want to stay here because we can't we can't leave the music and it's really bad So then literally as we're leaving the festival, literally as we're walking out, he starts playing Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. And so we're like, oh, of course, like as we're leaving, I'm like, it's going to be ruined in like 10 seconds. It's just going to be ruined. And it it went on for a while. And then he plays more like this, like I can stick around. I can vibe with some Taylor. And then he ruined it. But the fact that Taylor Swift at Neon Carnival, sitting right there, like beside the stage, also getting their ears assaulted by this. So I, I need to just show you her reaction to the cruel summer. First of all, she's lip syncing along to her own lyrics. Hilarious. Love it. Yeah. Love it. But like her little look on her face is like. He looked so shocked. And honestly, I was so shocked, not just by that remix, but by everything that my ears heard like my ears are still ringing and and it wasn't from the festival it was from that man and so whatever i know you like him i don't watch that show i don't know who you are sir i believe that i'm entitled to some compensation because i can't hear so yeah james kennedy really ruined the neon carnival experience but it was fun to go around and look at all the different brand activations like liquid iv is a huge sponsor and i honestly woke up the next day feeling great like None of us drank anything at Neon Carnival, but I drank so many different liquid IV drinks and they did it really creatively. So liquid IV is like the powder you can like pour in your water, but they had them in slushy form. Slushies. That's just like such a fun way to like consume it. It's something that's also very Instagrammable. Mm -hmm. Like it's cute. They were walking around on the dance floor with jello shots of liquid IV. That's also fun. I thought they did a really good job. Very functional and very good um, brand marketing. And I felt great the next day because I drank so many slushies. Patron was the alcohol sponsor. And at first I thought that their product activation was cool because they had these like mini glass bottles of Patron. Mm -hmm. So on the dance floor, instead of people like raising their cups it was like mini glass bottles which is you know their branding with a straw i thought the glass bottles were really cool until i almost broke my ankle on one of them because un- well when we were crossing the dance floor because you know when people are done their drinks if it's a can or a cup a lot of the times people just throw it on the floor but if it's a glass bottle uh or a very hard plastic bottle literally was walking and totally tripped over one. I was like, this is not safe. I changed my mind. I don't like this brand. <laughs> that was our cue to, between that and whatever James Kennedy was playing, that was our cue to leave. And we did. I noticed a lack of influencers that have gone to Coachella every single year. And they didn't go this year. The That's So Sabotage girls always have like the most fire fits. I like went on their feet and they didn't have anything from Coachella. Like they literally didn't come to Coachella. Is Coachella over? This year in every aspect was definitely a turning point to Coachella. And I want to say, I don't know that I was mad about it. I think Coachella has probably like peaked for the masses and like the general 
pop culture like hysteria around everything, yeah. but it's narrowing in on its true target audience. So the people that are actually going to Coachella and going for the music, going for like the good times that we have, it's a much better experience. I absolutely agree with that. And I do think that there's still an interest in what's happening in Coachella. I really feel like Coachella, just like any other brand, goes through evolutions, right? And chapters in its experience. I feel like what's happening this year felt like a recalibration of the festival, but also for like people knowing why they want to go, right? For me personally, and I think for a lot of folks, like the music is at the top, but there's still something really interesting around the fashion and the art and that you do still get to have those celebrity spottings either um, either in like the crowd or also just the guest appearances that happen. And one thing I will say, this year, I, I was so impressed with the celebrity guest appearances that happened during sets. Coachella used to have a huge thing where it was all about your guests. And then I would say the last two years, it has not been about that so much the performers are really wanting to like have their own credit for their sets. But then this year that completely changed. We saw a lot of artists bringing out guests that they don't have songs with at mm. all. And they just will give them space to sing their own music, like sing another song that's like totally not a part of their thing at all, which I just thought was so interesting. So the two big ones we each saw without each other. Yeah. I saw Billy when she came out with Lana which was so cool, so like woman, supporting woman. This is the reason for happy bitches existence. in each other's presence, like hyping each other up. My big one was seeing Shakira with Bisa Rap, and they do have uh, a couple of songs together. I was trying to explain to Taylor who he is because she had no idea what's a comparison that Taylor would understand. I was like, oh, think like Metro Boomin for Latino artists or just like a Latino Metro Boomin. So a producer who makes music for all of the hottest Latino artists. His biggest song last year was with Shakira. That would be so cool if he brought her out, but I didn't think it would happen. And when I walked over to a set right when Shakira was coming out, I lost my mind and you could just feel it in the audience. People were just being like, oh my, oh, well, in Spanish, ay Dios mío, <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> it was madness. It was amazing. Who was your second big one? Okay, well, I was really excited to see Barry Kent swim because they had like hyped up his set so much, but I just wasn't into it. It was just, it was all off and I was bored. And that's the thing about Coachella, there's so much stuff going on. So I knew you were over at Thames. Mm -hmm. So we're like, let's go like watch like a song of Thames and then hit the do lab or something. So as we're walking over, because the two tents are right beside each other, you I hear, hear go mad. And I was just like, so that's my second biggest one um, was Justin Bieber appearing with Thames um, alongside Wizkid for the Essence remix, which he is actually on that song, um, which was a controversial thing when it came out like two years ago um, because Afrobeats hadn't quite popped in the U.S. at that point. And a lot of people think that like Justin came on the remix kind of just to help bring Afrobeats to the to the masses from like the real Afrobeats fans. They're like, we didn't need this remix. We didn't need this remix. So I was like maybe two people behind the stage. And when Bieber came out, you could not even hear him because people were screaming. It was like pandemonium. That was me screaming in the back, literally sprinting in like, Bieber! I would say Justin Bieber is was the, the biggest surprise that was a huge surprise he's also the biggest person that i've like loved the most that i've never seen live at all mm -hmm. so it was cool even just the, the 30 seconds that he did or whatever that was really cool i think a brilliant guest move to reach new audiences no doubt and olivia rodrigo oh my gosh that was so okay so this is 
this is one of the moments where me and Taylor is like, <laughs> this is artists. where our internets and interests align. It was just so perfect. The, their aesthetics are similar. Their voices sounded so good together, mm -hmm. having so much fun together. I think that was like a really great moment for like reaching new audiences for both of them. So it was like a strategic marketing move that was chef's kiss. Totally chef kiss. Should we have a little recap of the brand parties? Let's talk brand parties. Let's talk brand parties because this year we went to more brand parties than we normally have. Yeah. And I, like I, I kind of feel like brand parties are overhyped. They definitely are, I think, especially in the Coachella context. But I will say I think that they're overhyped because in years past they were things that were worth the hype. I think this mm. year there was like – a really interesting difference in terms of the economy and what's happening in the brand marketing world in general right now. There was so much anger at the influencer takeover of Coachella that I feel like overall this year, a lot of brands like dialed back the extravagance of some of their parties. And so going to them felt like, oh, this is so much less than what I've seen before or experienced before. Did you feel that way? There is data to support that, actually. This is from Business of Fashion. The headline is, Revolve invented influencer marketing as we know it. Now it's pulling back. At one time, a photo with a Coachella Ferris wheel was the most iconic Instagram status symbol to come out of the two-weekend concert. Then the Revolve Festival carousel swing came along. The fashion retailer's carnival ride became a flex that separated the influencers and A-list celebrities from the masses. This year, the swing was no more. So this year they just hosted Revolve Festival at the Parker. It wasn't like at some huge estate. estate with like the whole like festival thing. They went back to it just being one day instead of the whole weekend. Right. In 2022, they had 5,000 attendees. This year it was 1,200. So wow. they really wow. pulled back and they weren't like, let's invite – Every single influencer that comes for Coachella, like, let's, you know, have this huge, massive event. Right. Much and more curated list. Curated, smaller. And so basically everything you were just saying is, like, actually accurate because Revolve, I think, is such a, like, leader in the influencer marketing space. Mm -hmm. So they made such a conscious decision to obviously spend way less money Absolutely. on Coachella. Um and Revolve is the one party we did not get an invite to. And I am, if Revolve, if you're watching this, doesn't mean I don't want it, okay? I actually, one of my fits was like all Revolve. I was really surprised that they had so many more like plus size options now. So that was cool. Shout out to Revolve. The 818 party. Yes, the 88 party. Neither of us went. What 818 was trying to do is probably the opposite of what Revolve was trying to do this year. Whereas Revolve was like, let's go from 5,000 to 1,200 attendees. 818 was like, let's go have mass appeal. And I think they used it kind of like a content farm. Let's invite way more people than we have capacity for. So we're going to make you stand in a really long line. And then when you get in, let's make sure you don't stay here too long. Let's make sure you get your content and leave because we're going to give you a two drink max. And then you can get out of here and we can get the next people in. You know, if you don't drink, it doesn't matter. But it's just so funny that of the brand activations, the only one happening throughout the entire weekend that I heard of having a drink limit being the one that is actually the alcohol brand. And mind you, an alcohol brand owned by a billionaire. And honestly, I wasn't like super trying to go to that party anyway. But hearing that just made me so happy that I didn't. I feel like some brands feel like they just need to have a presence there. So they just kind of like throw a party, but they don't care too much about the brand experience that people are having. And so it's just kind of like a fail. Maybe they think they just need to curate a content opportunity, but that's not actually the case. If you're inviting content creators and influencers to an event, they need to have a good experience in order for them to want to post this free content for you. They're not going to like post and rave about it if you're not A, really caring about them 
or B, just treating it as some sort of transaction or something. A thousand percent. The event that was really bad that we went to was the True Religion event. Starting with when we got there, it was like a shuttle stop to the event. It was like creepy. It doesn't feel like safe. Like an abandoned dust field. And then we like go into the event and it was marketed as a gifting suite. And like the gifting that was there was strange. Like, well, none of the gifting was by true religion. It didn't make sense with the brand. So some of the free things that they had there, like a vape company. This was the weirdest one. Was so weird. They were like, hey, do you want this? Yeah, you can take a vape if you post about it on your Instagram story and tag us. Who in their right mind? Who would trade a $20 vape to post that on their story and tag it? And have that be their And then sit there and be like, this is like worth that transaction. It just does not make any sense. This is just how you do like influencer marketing like gone wrong. Absolutely wrong. And so if any brands listening who are thinking about this, it's like you don't have to give out a ton of free stuff to have that be a draw for your event, but it's creating a unique experience for the attendees that is in alignment with your brand that helps people in a real time way experience your brand and your brand story and understand the brand identity from an experiential perspective. That is the point. Yes. If your brand was a party, what type of party would it be? We did make a fail. We missed Camp Poosh because it's just too hard. It was one to four. We just couldn't make it there. It was like 3.15 when we were ready to go. Hopefully we will get to try and do that again. We talked about the worst party we went to. Let's talk about the best one. HBO's House of Dragons event was so good. That was my favorite. It was the Ed Banger party. So there was like a bunch of cool DJs coming in, like Busy P, one of the guys from Justice. There wasn't too many people there. It was more just like this cool vibe. They had a cool content opportunity. They did literally bring in the Game of Thrones, like Iron Throne. That's pretty cool. It's super cool. And it was like massive and looked so heavy duty. And sitting in it to get your photo there was just like, huh. I could go conquer some other kingdoms. I could absolutely do that from this headspace. It's giving Khaleesi. Hi. <laughs> Who? Khaleesi. She's like the queen from Game of Thrones. She's like the blonde one. This is actually not a different internet thing. I have not watched Game of Thrones or House of Dragon, but I feel like even other people who haven't would know that reference. And I yeah. just, that went totally over my head. It's okay. You're the Khaleesi of my heart. How was the nylon party? So let's talk nylon party, an invitation that is highly coveted. It's a status symbol for sure. It was just so cold. And so they were giving out hoodies, which everyone was wearing. So really great content op for them and just like functional. The music was really bad. The music was bad. I saw that Tinks was DJing. So maybe that was when she was I think on. that was when I the one I saw. Sophie Tucker is really fun and good. It was wonderful. Tall, skinny, blonde. Sophie Tucker is a girl and a guy. In any case, the nylon party had a lot of really cool gifting things. Elf had a section in there. They were doing ear piercings. Those are like really cool things to have at like a brand experience. And I think obviously for nylon, it makes a lot of sense, right? I think they did a really good job. I have to show you the weirdest brand campaign that I've seen. Okay, I have to see this. This is so bizarre. Ashley Simpson. Hmm. Already bizarre. <laughs> this is the caption. God. Another day in the desert in the new Pringles and Crocs classic crush boot. Hashtag Crocs partner. It's a boot? No. That you can put your can of Pringles in. Why would they do that? This is the type of thing I would expect to see on April Fool's, like an April Fool's campaign. The fact, okay, there are two, two layers happening here that are confusing to me. One, Crocs has been on such a roll these last few years. So you would have to go out of your way to fail at this point because of how popular they've become and how useful and how just socially acceptable it's become to wear them anywhere. My qualm with you is why did you even create these? Why did you even create these? What's the function? Crocs is such a functional brand, such a functional brand that somehow became fashion. Why would you do that? That's the first confusion point. My second confusion point, how many people did you 
asked to do this before you arrived at Ashley Simpson and her husband. Are you in need of a bag that bad? And, and then my third point, I said there was two, but now there's an extra point because now I'm heated about this. Ashley, why? It's just Evan, so weird. Evan, you're a Ross for a Ross. Your sister's a comedian. Leave the comedy to her. Let's read the top comments. Okay, did you both lose a bet? My question is, did y'all lose a bag? Girl, I know you're trying to get paid and everything, but what the fuck are these? What are those? That's the next comment. <laughs> <laughs> it just, they're so ugly. And I'm just thinking about, okay, first of all, how much money would they have to pay you for you to wear those at Coachella and post about them? I mean, at this point, at this moment in my life, probably not too much. I would need to see the color options that they have. <laughs> I think if you're investing and you're thinking this is going to be like a funny brand moment at Coachella, like you need to have your own organic content supporting that campaign. And when you look on their Instagram, there isn't anything about it. I need to understand just like from a sanitary perspective, why would I walk around and keep my Pringles at ground level at Coachella, even if Pringles have a lid on it? Not only are they ugly, they're not functional. It's unsanitary. It just, it's so bad. But that being said, Pringles, um, if y'all are looking to sponsor people, I'm available. So all in all, that's a wrap on Coachella week one. Going back to the question of is Coachella dead? I would say absolutely not. The experience of Coachella is evolving. I'm really curious to see where the festival goes. I'm curious to see how weekend two is, but curious about the years to come. I, as a festival goer, really enjoyed the festival. A plus on the sets starting on time. And overall, yeah, I had a really wonderful experience. I'm excited to go back. Yeah, I think that Coachella is just really honing in on its true fan base, its true fans, and curing that experience for them, especially with less people coming. It was a better Absolutely. experience because of that. The logistics were better all around, less lines, easier to get to and from. They had more streams online, but it, it does not translate. Like watching Lana's set last night on YouTube was nothing like watching it in person. Mm -hmm. It does not translate at all. The more Coachella stays true to their loyal fans and audience, it results in like a better experience for like their true fans. So um, Coachella till we die. Okay. Let's all right. go hot tub now.